चल 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 मोहन Hello. Hey, sir. <clears throat> hey, sorry, I was on mute. Kind of taking a different call. Just getting this one set up. How's it going, guys? It is going well. Well, that is good. <laughs> yes. Ah, oh, boy, it's hard to get back in the swing of things after the nice break between KubeCon and. Thanksgiving and everything. Um, obviously, I'm watching the AWS keynote at the same time. Oh, anything exciting going on there? Um, not for me. <laughs> okay. We're talking about uh, VMs and like virtualization stuff, all things that I'm not. To I, I I can't get too excited about this it's other people problem. Gotcha. Hey Tommy. Mm. Christian. Hey. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And hello, Ginger. Oh, hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hi, you there? Yes, I am. Welcome, Welcome back. Yeah, hey, it's, it's everybody, yes. Roland, are you there? Um, hello. Hello, I think I barely heard you in the background there. Hello, yes, I'm here. There you go. Right, is this your first time on the call? It is indeed. Okay, do me a favor. Um, let me paste a minute, a link to the minutes. If you can just Put your company name next to your name in the agenda just so I can give your company credit for joining. I'd appreciate that. All right. Thank you. And do, do, do. Do, do, do. Hey, Christoph. Hey. Hey, and John, are you there yet? Good morning. Good morning. You know, if I don't remember, somebody please remind me. Um, I was going to ask if people actually wanted to have a phone call on the 19th. Because I don't know about you guys, but at least within IBM, a lot of people start taking vacation right around the 15th or so. So I don't know how many people are actually going to want to take a phone call on the 19th. I will certainly be on vacation. Yeah, I'm supposed to be. But for you guys, I'd join a call, you know. Oh, that is so nice. Of <laughs> yes, uh, yes. I don't know whether it's dedication or insanity or something, but there's it's something. <laughs> I know how my wife feels about it, so we won't, we won't go into that. Yeah. Well, you guys are all early today. Morning, Eric. Hello, Doug. And Manuel, are you there? Manuel Stein? Yes, hello, I'm here. Hey, is this your first time on the call? Yes, it is. Okay, great. Can you do me a favor? I'm going to paste a link to the agenda doc into the chat. If you could just add your company name next to your name, just that way you guys can get credit for joining. I'd appreciate that. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. And Ryan, are you there? I am, yes. Hey. I know this isn't your first time on the call. I can't remember if I have your company name associated with you or not. I am with uh, Twilio. Okay, that sounds familiar. Okay, got it. I'll park that just in case I forgot. 
Okay. Just just one L. But. Oh. <laughs> Holy cow, my mouse is nowhere to be found. Jeez. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> and let's see, Jim, are you there? Yes, sir. Hello. Hello. Do -do -do. All right, one more minute, then we'll get started. Mohammed, are you there? Hey, yep, good morning. Good morning. Colin's on a plane too, Doug, so he won't uh, be coming. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Klaus, are you there yet? Oh, maybe he got chopped. Okay. Anyway, we'll catch him up later. All right. 16, let's go ahead and get started. Um, okay. Community time. So for those of you who are new to the call, <clears throat> excuse me, this is a time for anybody who's normally not on the call to bring up a topic that they might want to bring up for discussion for the community to, to ponder. Is there anything people want to bring up? All right, moving forward then. Um, just a reminder, we don't have a call December 26th or the 2nd. Does anybody want to have a call December, uh, what is that, 19th? I know a lot of people are gonna be on vacation starting around the 15th or so. Do people have a preference for a call or not on the, on the 19th? I'll side with your wife and say no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. I'll, you too. I'll be off as well. Okay. So is there any objection then to canceling the 19th? Okay. I'll make, I'll send that a note about that. Thank you guys. And Klaus, I think you're there now. Yes, I'm there. Okay. Can you gotcha. hear me? Yes, I can. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Cool. All right, moving forward then. Um, SDK, I don't think we've had a call for several weeks now, so I don't think there's anything to mention other than we do have a call scheduled for today. So if you're interested in that part of the discussion, just stick on the call after this one. We'll, we'll start basically immediately after this one ends, even if it ends early. Um, let's see, I don't see Kathy on the call or anybody else from that work group to mention anything. So I don't think there's anything to talk about relative to the workflow. Other than still, the work is still going on over there. So if you're interested in that, please join. They are ramping up. Um, what I want to do now is give an opportunity for people to talk a little bit about what happened to KubeCon. I do have a whole section down here talking about uh, what we're going to work on next. So save you know, those discussions for later. But does anybody want to bring up anything relative to the Practitioner Summit or the Cloud Events session um, that they think might be of interest to the group in general? Nothing? Okay, uh, I'll tell you what, I just let you guys know at KubeCon itself, um, I was hit up for quite a few uh, press interviews around uh, cloud events, um, well, mainly about cloud events, obviously, because we reached 1.0, but a lot of them also did then ask about, you know, what's gonna happen next with the serverless working group. And um, they all seemed really generally interested in and, and, and excited by cloud events, so that was all good. And they're also very much interested in what we're gonna work on next for the serverless working group. And I, I did let them know what the current thinking was in terms of some of the ideas that we've talked about. Um, uh, but I definitely did not tell them what we're gonna work on next because obviously we haven't decided yet. But I just thought I'd let you guys know that there is interest out there, at least from the PR type of people that I talked to, um, uh, not only in terms of what we've done so far, but in terms of what we're gonna work on next because a lot of them seem to really uh, like what we've done, not just from a straight technical perspective, but in terms of the community aspect, in terms of bringing everybody together, they seem to think that this was a little bit of a unique uh, occurrence, because um, while there have been standards work done in the past or other things, they didn't see it being quite as collaborative and, and non-political as this one has been. Um, and hopefully I wasn't lying, you guys feel the same way when I expressed that to them. Um, so they do seem to really 
like what we're doing here and they're very uh, eager to see what we work on next and to see if we can keep the, the, the good feelings going with all this. So I thought that was all kind of nice. But again, one last chance. Anybody else want to bring up anything relative to KuCon that, they might, that might be of interest? All right, cool. In that case, moving forward. What I wanted to do in the future calls is to make sure that we don't ignore some of the stuff that's going on in cloud events as we work on something new, is I want to do a little bit of things like issue triage or PR triage if needed. Um, but I'm not obviously going to spend the entire time on it. So what I did is I just picked out three of the newer issues and just to make sure we at least have some owners who are going to take a look at it. Uh, Clemens, I thought maybe you could take a quick look at this one to talk about AMQP since that's in your wheelhouse. Uh, yeah, so uh, I have an opinion about this. Um, well, we don't have to enter it now. Just could you just reply yeah, back to him on the call? I mean, in, in the I, issue. I will. I will take a look and then we'll. I will voice my opinion in that PR. Okay. Because, cool. Because this expired draft has become the proprietary protocol of a, of one particular product, mm -hmm. and uh, as such, um, I think. Um, the similar rules apply as they do for um, other products of that sort and that we link to a spec. That's myself. Right. Okay, cool. And the next one, um, the person who opened it, he basically just had a whole bunch of questions about, um, about how to use cloud events. And, and I did my best to try to answer his questions, but there was one outstanding thing that I wanted to get clear or confirmation on from Scott in particular. So Scott, I was wondering if you could at least take a look at the, at the mention of your name in there to see if I got the answer right about Knative, if you get a chance. Okay. Thank you. And then the last one was somebody wanted to talk about open API for our stuff. Um, and Scott, I know you said you had some experience with opening API stuff. I was wondering if you could take a look at that one as well, um, unless there's someone else on the call who feels like they have enough knowledge in that space to, to take a look at that one. Can you can you clarify what the question there is? Which one? Um, the, first the, the, the open API one. Oh, um, I think you just want to know how to write a Swagger doc for it, but I'm not 100% sure. Let me go back and remind, refresh my memory here. The thing that's funny about that is that it's not going to work for HTTP for both encodings. You're going to have to choose up front which encoding you're swaggering for. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what you, I, I, I'll see if we actually did that, whether we bothered to or not, because it, it doesn't, you know, it's questionable whether it actually makes sense. Okay. Well, if, if you guys could take a look at that, I'd appreciate it just so that we don't feel like this, or that, that, that this guy doesn't feel like we're ignoring him. Okay. Yeah, I, I'll have a look and see what we did. Cool. Thank you. And did you raise your hand for a different question or was that it? No, I just forgot to lower it. Okay, that's fine. Cool. Okay. Uh, luckily, we have no PRs review, so that's all good. So now I can jump into the fun stuff, what to work on next. Let's see. I want to show something here. So a couple things. First of all, um, in terms of the face-to-face -face meeting and the serverless working group session that we had at KubeCon, uh, we did take notes, and the link to it is in, uh, in the meeting minutes. It's this link right here. Uh, we did take notes in terms of you know, people who were there, um, brainstorming sessions. To me, the most important thing was once everybody was done with their sort of brainstorming ideas of what we could possibly work on, we then asked the group, okay, after all these ideas, let's narrow it down to what we actually think is doable and, and possible to work on and people could actually get behind. And it came, basically came down to this list right here, which is, doo -doo -doo, where is it? Oh, I don't have it there, never mind. Okay, which is basically this list right here. Now, um, and this is in the meeting minutes as well. Um, the other thing is though, at the, at the birds of a feather working group session we had, um, here's basically a summary of the notes that I took there. What was interesting to me was a couple of things. First, um, there seemed to be a split in the room about how important portability and lock-in was. Um, we had some people who thought it was very, very important, and we had some people who thought it wasn't important at all, and people just managed to work around it. So I thought that was kind of interesting because in the past, most people seem to think that interop was actually a really big concern. So it, it kind of took me back a little to hear that for some people, it's not an issue whatsoever. So I thought that was kind of interesting. 
Um, but the other interesting thing is that in terms of what to work on next, there definitely seemed to be a lot of people leaning towards the discovery and catalog side of things, which was interesting. Um, and in terms of adoption of serverless and functions itself, um, the general consensus I got from the room was um, for newer things, people don't necessarily seem to be having a concern with going towards serverless. Um, the bigger concern to be seem to be more around things like, you know, how do they get there from where they are today? So for example, how would they break up the monolith, not just in containers, but then all the way down to functions? Or they're a little bit nervous about the technology, so they may start with tooling type of stuff or utilities and not necessarily jump full head, you know, head on into using it for product level code quite yet. So it's a slow progression kind of thing, which, which makes sense um, from all perspectives in terms of, you know, slow learning curve. So that was, that was kind of nice to hear. But the biggest thing I think for us is to actually talk about what to work on next. And as I said, I think discovering catalog was probably the top thing that, that kept coming up and a very close second was uh, function signatures. So I think those are sort of the two top things, but let me pause there and see if other people who are at KubeCon had a different take than, than my view of it. Nothing? Scott, Clemens, Klaus, I'm trying to remember who else was there. You guys had anyone you want to add anything to that? Oh my God, I didn't pay attention. To what, my question or the entire KubeCon? To the question. <laughs> I was wondering if you had anything to add to my commentary or summary of what happened at KubeCon. You are summarizing things well, as always. Mm, okay. <laughs> okay. In that case, um, what I'd like to do is this. Um, <sighs> Okay, I'm not quite sure how to proceed here. Oh, I'm sorry, was someone going to speak up there? Yeah, can you exp tell me in one sentence what catalog discovery means? Is that for uh, cloud events or is that for function as a service in general? So I'm going to hand it, I'm going to force someone else to talk here. Scott, I'm going to have you answer that one since this was more your idea than anybody else's at the Ecogon itself anyway. Yeah, so uh, catalog, what do we call it? Um, <clears throat> catalog for uh, producers and consumers. So basically like think open API, but open API is tied to usually HTTP. Uh, so it, it dictates a, a certain protocol that you need to speak to the, that producer or that consumer. But what we've done with cloud events is kind of reduce the, that dependency on the protocol you choose. So I would like to explore a, a, some sort of concept where you can you can get a catalog of events from a uh, let's let's take a producer and it says I produce the following conical versions of cloud events. It possibly also says I can speak on these protocols. So an agnostic way to ask about what what the shape of the event and what what does it mean to you to use the extension foo, where foo is not defined in the cloud event spec, but but maybe used in your organization when you're trying to negotiate which foo you actually mean. Does that help, Christoph? Yes. Got and, it. Thank you. Yes, okay. I think I think we had so we had clustered a few things um, in the discussion, and the three things we clustered together were the idea of uh, of this catalog, and it is you know ask a and ask a publisher or its its uh, um, delegate. Um, in form of middleware, what um, uh, events are available, uh, and then a schema registry, which you know tells you what the payloads are in those events. I think that those things work well, very well together, and then um, the subscription API. To now, you have discovered how you're going to get at those. Yep. Yeah. The the, uh, the subscription API kind of requires what what the shape of the event will be because we would like to filter on only things that are inside the, the envelope of the cloud event. And so you need to know what the envelope looks like. Yeah, and, and I think even if you didn't want to be intelligent inside of the, uh, inside of the middleware, um, for schema bound encodings like um, 
I mean, we kick, we kick those out now, but uh, I think Proto is going to be back. Um, for schema bound uh, encodings where you can't even decode the body without having um, a, a schema at hand, um, I think a schema registry will be important even if the middleware doesn't reason about the, the payloads. Yeah, and what I like about this direction is that I know in the past we've talked about uh, subscription API is something possibly to work on next. And I think as, as Scott has pointed out a couple of times, um, that, that that's all well and good, but without the discovery side of it, it's going to be hard to to automate it and write tooling around that stuff. So I think what's really cool about this is, as Clement said, if you can link, you know, the discovery of what events are being generated, what their schema is, that goes very nicely uh, with the subscription API definition as well. You know, they all kind of fit together into this sort of attacking the same general problem of, you know, how do you get, the, how do you start asking for the events and what types of events are you going to receive? And it all just seems to fit nicely. And of course, it's also a nice next step for the evolution of, of cloud events in terms of using the cloud event metadata they were defined in the next step of your, of your tooling exploration kind of stuff. So I thought it was kind of a nice Heinz? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I would like to uh, invite people that are involved in that topic to maybe have a sidebar discussion. Uh, the reason I bring that up is we have actually got a beta product that is the catalog, automatically generates the events. We've actually pushed that into async API, which is a parallel thing to uh, open API except for non HTTP and we have code generators that have actually demonstrated internally just this week to our executive branch to generate uh, spring cloud streams applications based on cloud events in the category uh, in the uh, catalog and for some self discovery so I'd be interested in some opinions and uh, what we've generated that uh, might help us on the product direction as well. Cool. I don't suppose you have a link to something you could point us to, do you? Well, I could, but then you'd have to be an employee. It's all internal. Yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> but I could actually, uh, sometime in the future, if people are interested, uh, uh, post a little demo or a little video if you're uh, interested as well. Okay. That sounds cool. All right. Um, any other questions or comments just around the idea? idea of catalog discovery, subscription API type stuff. So we're looking at basically these two things here. Yeah, hey, this is, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, if I can make one comment on the subscription API. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I, so I basically write a, a software as a service API and we would push uh, our events into a middleware. And if they're hosted, like uh, for example, Azure Event Grid, then our the end consumer would uh, subscribe, should subscribe at the event grid API. And then our API would push the events to event grid and event grid would route them further. But there's a problem in that if we push all of our events into event grid, this can be a lot of them. And the end consumer maybe only wants a few of them. Um, so what we end up with is maybe us pushing hundreds or thousands of events and the end consumer only one or two of them. So that's like a huge waste of money. So if we could get like a standardized subscription API so that it can be forwarded along multiple hops, then the first event producer can already know what uh, events to send on. So I would be very interested in this one. Cool, yeah, that sounds interesting, I like that. Yeah, we, and we have we, the same problem in, in Knative. We call the technique uh, upstream filter propagation. It's yep. a very nice name. Yep, I like that. And who else raised their hand in there? I can't remember who was trying to speak as well. Uh, that was me. This is Ryan from Twilio. Um, yeah, I'll just echo that. Um, uh, we are um, working on some things that we're, we basically need to invent all of these are on our own. So I think that's good validation um, to uh, focus on these next from, from our side. Cool. Good to hear that. Yeah. So <clears throat> I'm hearing lots of people jumping on board with the idea of of catalog discovery, subscription API, that kind of stuff. However, I don't want to uh, assume it, you know, too much of an answer here. But so, so let, let me let me 
let's, let's take a step back for a second and see, are there other ideas that people have either on the list from, you know, the, the minutes that I'm highlighting here, or just other ideas in general that people think, no, we're missing the boat. This is the next best thing we should be working on instead. And Jim, you're up. So I, I guess the only one that I would add to this list, I mean, I, I, I think this list is good, um, is sort of end-to-end -end, um, security. So, you know, how you prove non-tampering of payloads and, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I think that actually did come up during our brainstorming session at the at the at the um, at the face to face. Um, I it and I think it's something what we need probably an opinion on um, whether it needs to be spec to the level of a, a subscription API or anything like that. I'm not sure. Um, it's more of a pattern, I think, initially. But. So. On that one, I'm trying to figure out what you'd like me to, or what you'd like us to do with that. Is that something that you would like to ponder a little bit more to see what that actually means, or do you want us to actually put, you know, put that on par with the other one and say, no, we need to choose between the two because this one's just as important? I don't want to railroad it. I mean, I'm I'm interested if other people think there's um, a need for that because you know if I'm in a extreme minority, which isn't uncommon, by the way, um, <laughs> then, um, then I'm not going to push it. Yeah. No, no, and I, I apologize. I kind of I kind of inverted the discussion here. So let me ask anybody else on the call. I, for example, Clemens, I think you may have brought up security at one point as well, but you didn't seem to think it was, it was at the same level of that's what we should work on next. It was just something that was sort of was in the hopper of something to consider. So what do the people think on the call? It, about the internet security idea. Is it just an interesting idea or is it something that, you no, know, we actually should consider working on that next? So, um, I, th I think the, the registries, if we call them that, are um, a bit more important. Um, and, and so, and security is something that we can, um, uh, we can probably tackle next. Now there is a. Um, I think the the pieces that are up to us to pick or to standardize, even if we think about you know, creating an ecosystem which is backed by interoperable software, then it's not so much about the end-to-end -end encryption per se. That's a that's an aspect of it. But there we have to go and pick pick something that we all can understand, like S MIME or something like this. But then the question is, from an interop perspective. Is how do we store the the crypto material? How do we, how do we share it? So if you go and publish, start publishing um, events, and you use asymmetric encryption, you know, how do you share your public key? And if you and because it's asymmetric and because it's it's PubSub, your t your keys will degrade quicker than they usually would because you can't negotiate session keys which means you know, need to be able to roll them, which gets you to the point that you have to have a schedule of keys. So there's, I think there's lots of stuff that is required for and uniquely required for Reddit flows that calls for having you know, a common interface to a key vault. Um, and I think that's something that we should go and take a look at more than, than really you know, figuring out what a new crypto model would be. Because ultimately, I think SMIME or something like this is 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 ready to go, but I think having having you know a unified view of a key vault that would be more interesting. I think that's something that we should eventually tackle. But from a priority perspective, I think of the the um, uh, subscription um, and um, discovery um, and uh, schema registry as a higher priority. Okay, thank you, Clemens. Uh, Eric, your hands up. Yeah, I, I actually have to say that I effectively agree with everything that um, Clemens has just said. Uh, I was also surprised, along with Jim, uh, or I, he didn't state this, I was surprised that end-to-end uh, uh, -end security concerns, signatures, encryption, that kind of stuff hadn't been on the list as something to discuss. Um, so I, I want to second that as, as something valuable to, uh, to keep up there. Um, I do uh, think that the... Uh, I, 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 th I think there's uh, a delivery API that perhaps is separate from a discovery or subscription API. 
um, that also uh, is, is higher priority than some of the security concerns uh, for this group. Interesting, okay, hold on a minute. Okay, uh, just to, from my own understanding, when you say delivery API, um, what, what does that encapsulate? Is it is something like the, the webhook spec that we've already produced fall into that category or are you thinking something different? I mean, uh, it would be similar to the webhook spec. I, I, um, yeah, I mean, if you squint at the subscription API, when you ask to be delivered something, inherently you should then probably also talk about how that will be delivered. Mm -hmm. But I, I, there was um, there was a, a bit of a uh, I, don't know, I, I was I was envisioning the discovery and subscription as as kind of developer experience or you know although uh, there would be other things and then the the delivery API is going to be far more productionized and uh, far more performant. It's going to have a different kind of an environment and set of concerns it's going to need to fit into um, in order to be fit for purpose. So I. I there, there seemed to maybe not be enough uh, separation in how that was being discussed, and so that's why I bring that up. Okay, okay, thank you for the clarification. And I think, John, your hand is up next. Howdy. Yeah, I wanted to echo stuff that Clemens was talking about, but also the fact that the discovery work and catalog work, we're, we're going to have to deal with authentication of those things. So it kind of leads into the, the start of a bunch of the security work anyway. Okay. Hold on a minute. Good God. <laughs> Not type today. Okay, thank you. And Scott, your hands up next. Howdy. I think I want to add to what Eric was saying. Um, we did talk a little bit about function signature, uh, like function signatures and making that more common, but I don't think that's what you're saying. Uh, one thing we didn't really talk about, or maybe we talked about super briefly, was uh, protocol negotiation, where you could upgrade some, like if you wanted to talk over uh, Kafka queue directly, maybe that, is that what you're talking about with uh, being able to negotiate, or to talk about how to get things delivered in the subscription API? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's a really that's a good sophistication of what I was saying. Yeah. So, you know, what are, what are the rules and expectations? Kind of what are the guarantees that each side should make to the other? Um, if if it's a um, you know Kafka queue, is there a set of delivery requirements? You know, do I just say, hey, did you did I successfully open and transmit that data? Or hey, are you going to act that it was actually written to the disk? Some of these uh, you know nuances really matter for how you design a system. So, Eric, um, do you look at the delivery API as something that's actually distinct from subscription API, or do you look at it as a sort of a subcategory of subscription API because you have to do, as Scott called it, protocol negotiation? Uh, yeah, I kind of, I, I was, that, I, that's what I was saying. Uh, if you squint at subscription API, it, it includes a delivery API, but I think they're fairly different requirements for the delivery of data through a specific uh, um, protocol um, and and using maybe w even within a protocol specific rules about what that means. Um, it, it might be nice to have some amount of standardization across protocols, but that gets us into some pretty difficult waters. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, okay. So John and Scott, your hands are still up. I assume those are old, right? Okay, cool. Anybody else want to jump in here and comment on this? I just want to point out there were other things that were mentioned. Obviously, function signatures popped up there. Um, the refresh of the white paper and then some education stuff as well. Um, but does anybody else want to mention something that they think that we're just flat out missing and should be added to the list? Uh, Heinz. Oops, sorry, I was still on mute. Uh, uh -huh. Having done quite a bit of work with the APIs in the last couple of weeks, um, and the fact that, as I mentioned, we are doing a lot of code generation based on the schemas, um, some more expansion on the actual uh, cloud event schema, where right now it's quite elegant with all definitions. Um, however, 
Uh, I don't know if this is the best practice or something that should be defined farther. So for example, I ran into, if I had to add a uh, JSON schema that represented the data in the cloud event schema, how do I merge those? Should I make it another definition? Should I make it, you know, so there's quite a few ways to do these things and there might be a better way or a worse way that uh, might be recommended and possibly for example, we found some of the uh, um, libraries for some validations and things really don't like everything using definitions. They expect a more common definitionless schema. That might be something that is produced as well. So just a little bit more work around the actual schema because there is one, one example only and there's multiple ways to do JSON schemas. So make sure I just want to understand there. So when you talk about the schema, are you talking about the schema of say the the structured cloud event payload, or are you talking about the schema of the business logic? Uh, the schema in the structured. So we have the schema for the structured message, which is all <laughs> definitions. There's one example. However, for the data part, right? that in itself may be another complete JSON schema. Mm -hmm. So what is the best way to reference it? Do I do it with definitions? Do I inject it directly in the definition? Like what do we recommend for people that are doing JSON within JSON, which becomes very important for you know, things like code generators, which we're using where I can actually extrapolate that into then the Rather than having an SDK, I actually generate a full object setters and getters. So, you know, or maybe a, and we also ran into a, some of the uh, validation libraries using a schema that is there now, which is purely based on definition, mm -hmm. did not work correctly all the time. So having one example where it's not definitions, but a regular, you know, uh, uh, you know, structured attributes with all the properties and everything, uh, Kind of manually defined might be of value as well but just more work around the actual i mean all of this is based if you're doing the structured is this you know the uh, cloud event schema which right now there's one example and really no discussion or um, and, and again even though it's nice it should be cleaned up where some of the uh, definitions where they define the event and the event is then referencing other definitions they're kind of some at the top, some below, you know, just clean it up a little bit might not be a bad idea either. Okay, so it's interesting because this doesn't necessarily sound like this like a whole new work stream as much as it's just additional tweaks to the spec, it's to the, either the spec or the primer itself. And I think, at least from my point of view, that's always been a sort of on the table as, as people raise issues or concerns with the spec, right? Do I have that right in terms of classification? Uh, it's not, the spec is fine. It's kind of like when you're doing the SDK, it's great to have the libraries, but without examples, right. it's not going to be adapt, adopted and people get frustrated. Uh, so again, the spec is not affected. It's purely the samples of the JSON schemas provided, which to your point, I think might be referenced more towards the primer than uh, the spec itself. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the clarification. All right. Um, Manuel, take your hands up. Yeah, for the uh, post V.1, I don't know if, if, it's, uh, if it fits, but I'm sort of missing the packaging contract that was discussed in face-to-face. -face. Uh, it's uh, it clusters with the function signatures, right? So as Clemens yeah. was earlier pointing at, uh, we had the discovery cataloging, uh, delivery API, subscription API, or sort of all fitting in one cluster. Uh, and I think we had uh, more about how the functions uh, would be described in uh, function signature. Function right. Yep, you're right. I did forget about that. The only reason I didn't include it was because while it was mentioned during the face-to-face, -face, I, I, it was my impression that it didn't get as many votes as the other ones, but you're, you are definitely right. It, it was mentioned. Um, okay. Anybody else want to jump in there? Okay. So, I'm trying to think <clears throat> in terms of next steps here. My natural inclination is to believe that while it would be wonderful to work on multiple of these things at the same time, uh, given our history, I tend to think we have to be kind of single threaded 
Um, is there anybody that thinks we can actually do more than one next new thing, meaning not just tweaks to the current cloud event spec or anything around that, but in terms of a new project or new specification, does anybody think we could do more than one at a time? Okay, because that to me says we're going to have to come down to a vote and we're going to have to pick what that next one thing is. And I'm, I'm sorry, there's somebody in the kitchen, I think. Maybe you can go on mute. I'm not sure who, what that noise was. Um, it seems to me that it might be good for people to go back to their respective companies and do some thinking um, about what they think they'd like to work on next. I, ultimately though, I do think as of right now, I'm hearing more people leaning towards the subscription API type stuff more than anything else. Um, whether number two is things like function signatures or packaging contract or internet security, I'm not sure yet, but I'm, I'm not sure it matters um, because we're ultimately gonna pick one. But what I'd like to do is come back onto next week's call and basically take a vote in essence um, and say, you know, is it gonna be subscription API? Is it gonna be internet security or any other ones that were mentioned? Um, does that sound fair to people? I can give you guys one week to think about it and then come back and basically vote next week and see which one gets the highest number of votes? Or is there a different process you'd like to follow? Sounds good to me. Okay, thank you, Clemens. I don't like silence. <laughs> Anybody else wanna chime in? Otherwise I will assume silence is a agreement. Okay, so in terms of thinking about uh, what we're actually gonna vote on just to reduce the number of choices. I do think subscription API and discovery is on the list. I think many people have said yes to that one. Is there anybody who thinks that function signatures should be on the list for people to consider? Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go first with voicing an opinion on this one. Personally, I love the idea of function signatures. I think that that's a wonderful thing to tackle. However, I think that is a, it is a non, trivial problem to solve because of the differences between the various platforms that are out there today, which also tells me it probably might be very, very political. And so I would love to work on this thing at some point in the future. I think it may require a little bit more discussions offline first to see the, about the feasibility of it. Um, so I like to sort of keep that in the back burner, but in terms of as a top order vote possibility, I'd like to not include that in the list just because I think it's, it's not, it doesn't fall into that category in my mind of, small next baby step. This one feels like it's a, it's a biggie to think about and maybe a rat hole for us to think about. Um, but anybody else wanna advocate function signatures being on a list of considerations? Okay. These two things I think can be done anytime. We don't necessarily have to take a vote on it. They just need people to volunteer to do that kind of stuff. Uh, and, and security, I'm assuming that will be on the list just because Jim, you mentioned it and you thought it was important enough. Is there anybody who disagrees with keeping it on the list in terms of on the, on the vote for next week? Okay. Um, delivery API. Eric, um, since you mentioned it, I assume you'd like that on the list or not? However it works, we, we need to, that may be under subscription API. I, I, I don't have a strong opinion. Okay. Um, anybody else have an opinion as to whether it should be a standalone entity or we should consider it under the subscription API model or the project? Brian? I think that they are interrelated and I don't think that they can be, um, just having thought about this a bit in the context of what we're working on at Twilio, um, I don't know that they can be developed independently. Um, so I would advocate for, um, even if they are, you know, conceptually separate things. Um, I think they need to be thought about together. From okay. My experience. Okay. I should, I should mention offline, just because of all the discussions that have been going on, um, I started the process of putting together just something a little more concrete about what the discovery and the subscription API would concepts would be. Do not interpret this document as, as a, as anything other than just my ramblings, just try to get something a little more concrete so I can have a conversation with people about what we were thinking about doing. And as I said, you know, the link is here in the, in the, uh, in the notes. Um, 
Eric, what if we did this? What if we start off with delivery API being considered a subset of the subscription API discussion? And as we make progress on there, if it turns out it's either uh, too big or, or something causes us to think, you know, this really needs to be pulled out, we can pull it out later. Does that make any sense to you? Seems totally reasonable. Okay, cool, thank you. I'll, I'll move it into there. Okay. All right, um, Heinz, is it okay with you if I consider this to be just a normal part of maintenance work on the cloud event specification, so it's not necessarily considered as a top level potential new project? Oh, absolutely, and that's how I had uh, envisioned it uh, anyway, so we're on the same page. Okay, cool. And Manuel, um, do you think there was enough support for packaging contract to be considered a top level uh, vote possibility for next week? Ooh, I'm in the balance. If it was just uh, <laughs> container OCIs, then it might be low hanging food. Uh, if it was uh, functions delivered or wrapped up, then it might be similar to function signatures, a bigger one. So I'm not well, sure any, ask, any comments. Yeah, I was gonna ask anybody else on the call have any opinion on this one, whether they think it should be part of the vote for next week? Because as of right now, we have two items, discovery and end to end delivery. So this would be the third one. Anybody have an opinion? Just trying to reduce the amount of thinking you guys have to do for next week. It's a pretty crowded space. Yeah, you know, what's interesting is when I think about package contract, well, I think it actually kind of falls in the same category of function signatures as G's, it'd be really nice if, it, if there was commonality. It feels like it's gonna get very political very fast. Um, but that's just my, my gut feel. Yep, so let's leave it on the find. Okay, okay, so it sounds like we have end-to-end -end security and the discovery subscription API slash uh, delivery API as the two topics to consider for next week. Does that sound right to people? Okay, not hearing any objection. Oh, Clemens, were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just in, uh, I was just nodding loudly. Nodding, <laughs> okay. All right, so what I'll do is I'll send out a note saying that we're going to vote next week on these two items for next big work item to work on. And people should come um, prepared to vote either next week or if they can't make the call, then they should vote through email or however means, whatever means they want, then I'll record their vote. All right, anything else relative to post 1.0 or future work item discussion? Any other topics? All right, in that case, any other topics for the agenda at all people wanna bring up? All right, in that case, let's just do the final roll call and then you guys are free to go except for the SDK folks. Um, Doug, are you there? The other Doug. Here. All right, and Vladimir, are you there? I'm here, thank you. Excellent. Anybody else that I missed from the roll call? All right, cool. In that case, everybody but SDK folks are free to leave. Thank you guys very much. And we'll get started in just a minute or so as people leave the call. I unfortunately have to skip the SDK call. Okay, thanks Clemens. Yeah. I suspect it'll be short anyway, but we'll yeah. see. Yeah, sorry about that, but uh, nope. I'm triple booked this slot. Not a problem. Okay, thanks Clemens. Thank you, goodbye. Bye. So while we're waiting, um, Scott, do you have anything to talk about on the SDK call? And not really, and I want to go to the CADA call in 15 minutes. There's a CADA call? Yeah. Really? Where is that? Or who's hosting that? It's a CADA community. Hours. Oh, 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 I see, okay. Okay, well in that case, is there anybody who has any topics at all for the SDK side of the house? Because if not, we will just adjourn very early. Actually, I had a quick question. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Uh, I was trying to work with the uh, Java SDK and had some good success, except I could not get the Vertex 
virtual vertex thing working? I wonder if there's like a working sample that somebody might have. Anybody on the call use the Java SDK? You may try um, asking in the SDK Slack channel or open an issue because I think Fabio, while I don't, he doesn't typically join these calls anymore, he does monitor the GitHub repo fairly well and, it, and he does respond to my Slack messages. So he is in both of those places. Okay, he cool. May, yeah, he may be able to help you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Anything else or anything at all for uh, the SDK meeting? All right, in that case, we're probably done then. Okay, thanks guys. And we'll talk again uh, from SDK perspective in, I guess not two weeks, but back in, uh, it'll be in January then, because in two weeks we'll be on vacation. I'm not sure when the first meeting is in January, but we'll figure that out. All right. Okay, bye guys, have a good one. Thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, bye. Bye.